Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport, and in this video, we're going to calibrate a printer paper combination using the X-Rite i1 Studio, this device here. I've talked about this device before on how to calibrate your monitor with it, and today we're gonna to do color calibration of a printer and paper. And there's a few things that I want to cover up front before I show you the mechanics of how the software and the device work. Now, a fundamental thing to understand about calibrating a printer is not calibrating just the printer. It's the combination of the printer and the paper you're printing on. Now, different printers behave in different ways, and I think that's pretty intuitive. Papers behave different ways. You know, a glossy paper is going to interact with ink differently than a matte paper. And then the combination of a printer and a paper stock those will be different as well. So if you have multiple printers, it's probably obvious to you, you're going to have to calibrate multiple times. If you're printing with multiple paper stocks, you're going to need to calibrate for each printer paper combination. So let's say you have one printer, but three different types of paper that you like to print on, you're gonna calibrate three times, one for each paper. Now, if that sounds like a lot of work, uh, it's not uh, incredibly labor intensive. It's a bit time intensive because you do need to print test sheets. You need to let those test sheets cure, and then you need to scan them in with a device like the i1 Studio. So uh, that will take some time. And the, the benefit is if you are calibrating your device, and then you calibrate, sorry, your device, your monitor, and then you calibrate your printer, you're going to have a consistent representation of color from what you're working on and crafting your photo to what you're going to finally print it on. That's the benefit. If you're not calibrating your display, Calibrating your printer is, it, you know, it'll be helpful, but it's not necessarily going to be the, the richest, fullest, you know, color management experience. If you're printing with an outside lab, talk to the lab and find out how they want their colors represented. So, you know, this is not going to help you with that situation. And if this is all still sounding like too much work, take a look to see if your paper stock provider has ICC profiles. I print on Red River paper, and they have a wide library of printer combinations with their paper, all these ICC profiles. You can download for free and integrate into your workflow. And I've used those before I started calibrating my own device here in the studio. So with that explained, let's get into actually doing the calibration and profiling. The overall flow is you print some color calibration charts, scan them in with the device, print a second round of charts, scan those in, and then you have an ICC profile at the end of the process. So here's the i1 Studio software, and we're gonna go over to color print. I'm using an Epson P800, so that is a color printer. You'll choose your printer from the pick list, now the paper size, that only matters for printing the chart. It doesn't matter, you can print on smaller paper, uh, larger paper, I don't know why you'd wanna burn a large sheet of paper for a color chart. You know, eight by 10 is fine for this and it will print you know, two different charts for you. Description of the paper, now this is important. What paper are you going to be using? And uh, my test, I'm gonna be using Red River uh, Polar Pearl Metallic. And so I'll add that paper description in there. And why is it will show up on the print chart. So over here on the side, you can actually update it dynamically and it added that RR Polar Pearl Metallic. There is a pretty short limit on that paper description. So you will have to use a little bit of your own acronyms to figure all that out. Now this next piece is quite important. You want to do this data save workflow because you uh, will want to print these charts, let them sit for a while. You know, inkjet printers need some time to let the let the the ink and everything cure. And uh, I tend to let them sit overnight, but you can you know an hour or two. I think the software recommends maybe ten minutes. I'd advocate at least a couple of hours. So with that box checked, we'll go ahead and create a session and you give the session some type of name and save it out. I've already done this once before, so I'm not gonna save a new one here. And from this stage, I'll print the color charts. Now, I've already done the prints, so you don't have to wait around for that. I printed these out. It came out with two eight by 10 sheets for the first set of color charts. I let these sit overnight, and now that they're finished and I'm ready to scan these in. Now let me show you, if you're doing this, you would have printed these out, you would have saved your session and said, okay, I'm gonna come back later after these are cured. Here's how that would look in the software. You'd come back into the software and you'd load a saved session. You can say, here's my saved session. I'll say, okay. Now this is gonna jump forward a little bit on us because I'm working off of a saved session, but I can go back to the first measurement stage. 
okay, where I don't have the device calibrated yet. I've printed my test color charts. I need to calibrate the device. So I'll rotate the dial on the i1 Studio to the calibrate position, and then using the test chart, I'm gonna place it on the white part of the paper so I get a nominal reading of what no color is at all. And then we click the calibrate button and let the device do its measurements. All right, once it's finished, we'll rotate it to the measuring set, and then our software screen changes to show us the different color charts. And we're gonna use the device and just start scanning across each column of color squares to measure everything in. As you scan each column, you're gonna press and hold the button on the i1 Studio to tell the device you're actively scanning. As you scan, start in the white area below the first numbered column. And go all the way up the column until you're past the last color square. So this blinking indicator where the sensor is, you want to start in the white, go all the way through all the colors in that column, and end on the white. And as you scan each column, the software will either recognize that as a valid scan or ask you to repeat it. If you see the yellow outline on a column move to the right, that means you've got a successful scan on that particular column and you'll work through both your color test charts, 10 columns in all, until you've gotten all of the scans complete. And you want to save your session, so we'll save this session right now. That way I can continue with this work later because what happens now, we print a second set of color charts. It'll be slightly different than what you've currently printed. Those need to cure and sit, and they'll repeat the scan for those color charts as well. So once you've gotten through your second set of color charts, back in the software, we'll finish the scan by hitting next, and then you can finally save out your ICC profile. Now, choosing a profile name, you want to, at a minimum, work in the name of the printer and the name of the paper into the profile name so you know what it is. And I also like to use XWrite or i1 Studio in it as well, so I know that this is a profile that I created myself. So here, I'll just tailor this a little bit here and call this EPP800, and default paper is not what I want. I want to have RR Polar Pearl Metallic. And I'll keep the date in there for when I did this scan. The version number is fine, and I will save the profile. And after a few moments, the ICC profile is generated, and the profiling process with the printer paper combination is complete. When the i1 Studio software saves out the ICC profile, it puts it in the right place on your machine so other applications can pick it up. On a Macintosh, that's in the user's library folder under Color Sync, Profiles, and here is the profile we just created, Epson P800RR Polar Pearl Metallic. For example, in Lightroom's print module under the color management area, we have a profile section. I have a bunch that I've downloaded from Red River. I can also go and other and select the one we just created with the i1 Studio, click OK, and now that profile is available to me anytime I want to use my custom color profile for my prints. That's the whole process. I hope you found that useful. A couple things to remember, to let those test color charts stay out for several hours, ideally overnight, just let them dry out completely and then come back in and continue your work. And don't forget to do a calibration for each type of paper you're going to be printing with because there will be differences and those custom profiles you want to match to your printer paper combination. My name is Scott Davenport. You got questions about photography, printing, what have you, go ahead and hit me up through the comments below or you can keep it private through my website. I hope to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching.